Doodlebud here, and today we're going to be attempting to use my laser engraver. I got the Corrali Falcon 2 here with the roller set up ready to go. And we're going to hit it on this pen here, this beautiful fountain pen I was sent for review. This comes from Shibui North. And what she has, she has an engraving system where it's got a bit and she puts in intricate patterns. But what she did is she sent me this one for review and didn't put her pattern in it because she wanted to see, can I pull off a dis decent result here with my laser? So I've been doing some testing. I came up with a few issues. Let me show you here. First one, I'll, I got video footage of this because I didn't know what was causing it. You can see my pattern here. This is sort of like a Celtic knot. It goes along and, and puts it in, but you can see it's creeping forward, creeping forward, creeping forward, and then it comes back to the start. So I was having some issues with it, and uh, I recorded it, did a time lapse to see what was happening, and then I could see what was happening. This was going back and forth in the rollers, and it was slowly kind of creeping out this way. So I think I have a fix for that. Another thing I'm concerned about is this actual color. So this is a special blue PVD, but we also have a blue 22 watt laser. So I am curious how this is going to turn out. We have a wavelength that might be too close to the wavelength of the laser and uh, maybe nothing happens at all. I have no idea. I only have this one pen, so I only have one try and it better work or else I'm going to mess this up. Speaking of messing things up, this was the last time I engraved the pen. It worked out pretty good and then I kind of missed my uh, pattern here, you can see the spacing got off and it got screwed up. Everything got lined up, had a beautiful twist, but I messed that up. So my track record so far has not been good with engraving pens. I want to see how it goes today. I got my fingers crossed. Let me show you what I got and what my current setup is, and hopefully this works. I'm right here in light burn right now. This is my pattern, and uh, let me show you one of the issues I'm running into. So currently I'm going to do a fill layer. That means like a full engraving, but let me show you what happens if I change this to a line so it doesn't engrave the pattern. So now if I choose to do this as like vector engraving, so you can see it's, it's kind of like a candy cane thing, but it's gonna go back and forth and do that full shape and trace it out. So what's happening is in the roller, it's gonna be moving this back and forth the whole time with every engraving and just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the part tends to creep when you do it in the roller. What I'm going to have to do instead is change this to an engraving versus doing the line tracing, and that'll get rid of it. So I just go up to that layer, I change it to fill, and now let's show you what happens. So now with the engraving, it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, like an old like dot matrix printer. And so the part will be in here and just slowly rotate just in one direction. It's going to do 360 degrees, that's it. It's not going to be going back and forth. Um, so this is changing it to a fill or full engrave, a bitmap style engrave versus a vector draw, which would be a trace in on the outline. It will give a different effect, but it's going to eliminate all those moves and hopefully eliminate the part from creeping in the rollers and getting out of alignment. When it comes to settings to engrave this pen, I have absolutely no idea. So I'm just going to give it full beans, 100%. So 22 watts will go at 20 millimeters per second. And I'm hoping it will be tough enough to blast off this coating. And I am worried again, like I said, about similar wavelengths. What I'm going to do now is uh, take off the cap here. And I'm going to remove the nib and the feed because those are plastic. Well, the nib's not, but the feed is, this is an ABS plastic. I don't know how much heat this will generate. So I don't want that to melt it inside the pen. So I'm going to take that out really quick and uh, throw this on the roller setup. Wish me luck, we're gonna put this into the roller setup. Now this is the part where it's tricky. Um, one gripe I have with this system is it doesn't have the framing laser. So what I have to do is I have to try to go in here and manually line up. There's, you, you, I can't get you the angle, but you can just see the tip of the nozzle of the laser and there it is there. And I have to try to look through here in sight to line it up where I want to start engraving. I only have about a millimeter on either side that I have to be within uh, to have this pattern engraved properly and centered and look nice. So that's gonna be tricky. And then the other thing too, they have this mark here to say there's a laser, but that doesn't tell you where the laser is. That's actually right around back here somewhere. Same thing, the framing laser would be really nice if they had it, because then it can put the crosshairs or point whatever you got and it shows you exactly what plane it's on this way and this way, so you can find your starting point just a little bit easier. Okay, I think I'm lined up. I really have no idea. I'm gonna put my goggles on. 
we're going to hit the go button over here. I'll set up the tripod and uh, let's see how this turns out. So here's a little foreshadowing for you. A quick tip to everybody, if you're going to do this, first wrap your part in some tape, something like a masking tape, then run it at a very low power, and that way you can catch any issues you may have. So in this case, it's a bit of do as I say, but not as I do, and you'll find out why here in just a moment. Okay, it has finished the job. It runs for a moment. I guess just to cool everything down, let's let it finish doing that. Okay, and it just stopped. Now I took a little peek to see. I think I'm off just a little bit. Let's have a look at this. I see something on here. Ah, oh, son of a... Oh, it's actually pretty hot. That does look beautiful, but I screwed up. I missed a spot here. Damn it, not again. Uh, that did work out pretty well, though. Let me uh, let me just go wash this off, rinse it a bit. I figured we might as well come inside so we can get some better lighting and a better look at this. Now, I probably should just gone back to my first video when I tried doing a pen to see what I did wrong, so I don't do it again. But obviously, my mind works the same way, and I did the same mistake again. So, I... <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. So we definitely were able to take off that PVD coating. I will put the microscope attachment onto the phone here. So this is the other challenge, as I mentioned before, without the framing laser, it is tough to see. Also, when you're recording a YouTube video, you tend to screw up more. I forgot to hit frame before I did this. So I could have peeked through and seen where the laser starts here. And I would have noticed, oh, that's not quite even to where it ends there. And I would have moved it up a bit, bit there and... Uh, probably got it a little bit better centered. So that is off a little bit there too, but that is helpful if you do have a framing laser that's on there, you can spot that right away. So that isn't the worst part. The worst part is the missing Celtic knot. And it's a suicide mission, trying to place the pen in there and to make it go again, to just be perfectly spaced because you will see that is off in a second. <laughs> it'll, it'll look so out of place. You'll never get it bang on. So that's, again, that's not the laser's fault. That's the, uh, the guy behind the camera here. That's his fault. But let's, let's put the attachment on here. Let's put the microscope attachment on. And I'm curious what this looks like. All right, let's see. Oh, there we go. So now you can see, yeah, that actually went through there pretty good. We're getting nice dark color on. And so you can see we got the lines, the line path there back and forth from the, uh, from the laser. So you can see that. Um, if I did just the standard sort of vector, if I change this to a line, Instead of an engrave, you would just have a continuous line that would trace around the edge there. But we had to do it this way to be able to use the roller system. But all in all, that looks pretty clean. The overlap is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. There's no missing lines in between. And it's reasonably, reasonably crisp. Now, the ultimate way to do this would be with a, a Galvo fiber style laser. Um, but those are mega expensive. So I think for one of these sort of XY stage style engravers like we have here with the Falcon 2. It did a pretty darn good job. Overall, yes, this setup here, the Falcon 2, it'll do a good job of engraving these pens, even with these insanely tough PVD coatings. But there's three things we need to improve this. Number one is an operator who knows what they're doing and doesn't keep making the same mistake. Two, a framing laser on here, or at the very least, I will do this myself manually. From the factory though, they should have a scratch here and then a scratch here so you can know where the laser is positioned this way and this way so it's a little easier to get on point where you need to get to. The third thing would be to update this roller system. So this works great like this. So you can accept wide uh, parts as well so you can open up these rollers, but it would be nice if they also had the rotary uh, adjustment on here too, I should say adapter. So a lot of these you can have it like the roller, but then they'll have a chuck that fits onto here. You already got the belt drives, you got the encoder, you got the motor, all that good stuff. The, uh, so I've seen some other roller systems where they also have a chuck adapter that fits in there like on a lathe. And so then you can put parts in there like this and not have to worry about things creeping on the roller because it's clamped in, it goes back and forth a whole bunch. Also too, if you have things like with handle, say a mug, can't put a mug on here. 
right? So in a chuck system, you can put a mug in there so it can turn all the way around. I am impressed that this pulled this off and did a pretty good job. I'm unimpressed with yours truly. Oh, that's going to keep me up at night for some time here. But it is nice because it also adds a little more texture. Sometimes metal pens can be slippery. I don't find this one is. That adds some nice texture on there as well. And you can put all sorts of whatever patterns you want. So, you know, if you're into, say, customizing uh, pens for folks, they want special engraving, company logos, or just whatever it is, you can definitely do it with this setup. And it's pretty painless. Uh, just maybe do a little more testing, unlike I did, and you won't screw up stuff so much. I guess it's time to call it a night. <laughs> uh, this worked out pretty good. Again, that was user operator error. Sorry to Ruth at Shibui North. And this is why you're a pro and you do such a good job. You don't do that kind of stuff. Anyways, we'll leave it there for now. I got some other cool things I got planned here too. So you got to stay tuned. Hit subscribe. We'll catch you next time.